good morning in today's session we will learn about the frequency analysis of discrete time signals this topic is from your uh, unit 2 dsp techniques okay in the last class we have studied about uh, discrete time signals in detail right discrete time signals are represented as a sequence of numbers and we have already said that it is uh, obtained by the periodic sampling of continuous time signal or analog signal now yeah, this is uh, the first slide is just a repetition of what we have already seen in the last class that is uh, during sampling we consider only values of signal at sampling period multiples t that is x and t where uh, n uh, that is minus t t minus t 0 3 etc and uh, for uh, discrete signal we simply count the samples so discrete time becomes xn where xn is the nth number in the discrete sequence and n is an integer ranging from minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 and so on so we call discrete signals just sequences so just remember this discrete signals are always represented as a sequence of numbers and is obtained by the periodic sampling of a continuous time signal now there are two types of periodic uh, dis, um, uh, discrete signals one is periodic discrete signal and the other one is harmonic discrete signal so Periodic discrete signal, as the name suggests, it is uh, repeats at after n samples, and the smallest possible n is denoted as n1. That is, the smallest sample is denoted as n1, and is called fundamental period. Then, about harmonic discrete signals, they are also called by the name harmonic sequences. It is represented by the equation. Uh, see this equation: x n equal to. Uh, c1 cos omega 1 n plus 5 here this uh, argument of this particular equation as you all know it is, uh, it is something that is written inside this uh, bracket okay so that is this particular thing the one that is written within this bracket is actually the uh, argument of this uh, uh, sequence so um, the representation for a harmonic discrete signal is x of n equal to c1 cos of omega 1 n plus 5 where c1 is a positive constant which represents the magnitude then omega 1 is a positive constant and it actually stands for the normalized angular frequency and its unit is radian and phi 1 is the initial phase and its unit is also radian now we will see the properties of harmonic sequence okay suppose that the uh, we have you have a sample the signal say x of n is equal to c1 cos of omega 1 dash n plus phi 1 and then an consider another signal with the real time that is x of n t equal to c1 cos of omega 1 n t plus phi 1 so the first one is actually the sampled signal and this one is the signal in the real time okay in both these cases this omega 1 dash and omega 1 are the arguments okay uh, the, the, the everything that is written inside the brackets are called arguments so omega 1 dash in the first equation denotes normalized frequency whereas omega 1 in this particular equation actually stands for the corresponding real frequency okay so you have a sample signal omega 1 dash is called normalized frequency then you have a signal with real time um, and omega, omega 1 in that case is termed as real frequency now since the values of signals have to be equal argument of the signal also have to be equal argument has to be equal means omega 1 dash n plus phi 1 must be equal to omega 1 nt plus phi 1 okay this one these two arguments this one as well as this one also has to be same. so while equating definitely you can easily calculate this particular equation that is omega 1 dash is equal to omega 1 t this is again equal to omega 1 dash is equal to omega 1 by fs that is fs is actually the frequency that is reciprocal of this um, time period is frequency 1 by t is f or f is 1 by t okay so uh, this is how we can calculate normalized frequency from real frequency normalized frequency that is omega 1 dash is obtained from the real frequency omega 1 clear next we have an exponential sequence see how it is written 
exponential sequence is represented by this equation x of n equal to e raised to j omega 1 n and it looks the same for all angular frequencies say omega 1 plus 2 pi 2 k pi because just write like this x n equal to e raised to j in place of omega 1 we write omega 1 plus this one 2 k pi then n will be as same as such then you are expanding it so e raised to j omega 1 n is taken inside plus in e raised to j 2 k pi n and then we are introducing an initial phase phi here then what happens then again e raised to j we are splitting it this equation e raised to j omega 1 n plus phi 1 taken together and this one taken outside so this e raised to 2 k pi n is always equal to 1 so the equation becomes e raised to j omega 1 taking phi 1 to be 0 okay now a harmonic sequence can be decomposed as a sum of two exponentials that is the decomposition of harmonic sequence into exponential just study this expression how it is decomposed say x of n is equal to c1 cos omega 1 n plus phi 1 is decomposed to be c1 of e raised to j omega 1 n plus c subscript minus 1 e raised to minus j omega 1 n just understand how a harmonic sequence is decomposed and is represented as a sum of two exponentials okay next is the periodization of a sequence of length then suppose that you have a sequence xn of length n with non-zero samples for time 0 to n minus 1 that is periodization means uh, it is that particular sequence is repeated infinite number of times so you have a sequence of length n and it is repeated infinite number of times then you represent it is by using this particular equation that is x of n equal to x of mod n n that is mod we are introducing a mathematical function called modulo so if you have a sequence of length n and if it is repeated infinite number of times then that sequence can be expressed in terms of a mathematical function called modulo and this expression is like this so that's it okay now next we are talking we are going to talk about the shift various types of shift you have got two type of shift one is periodic shift and the other is circular shift first is periodic shift suppose that you have a sequence of length n and uh, it is delayed by m number of samples then that shift is represented by this xn is a sequence now it is delayed by m number of samples so xn becomes x of n minus m now if that sequence if it is repeated infinite number of times then definitely what i have already said is we introduce the mathematical function modulo so this equation will again becomes the same equation but we are introducing a term called modem this is same as others okay the only difference between these two equations is we are introducing the modulo function so if a if a simple sequence is uh, delayed by m number of samples then it is represented like this if that sequence is repeated n number of times then we, along with this we introduce a modulo function okay now circular shift it is similar to periodic shift but the resulting sequence is non-periodic in periodic shift the resulting sequence is periodic whereas in circular shift the resulting sequence is non-periodic and in that case we introduce a particular mathematical function not modular function but here we introduce a function called windowing function see this equation and compare with this uh, periodic shift this is same as this but uh, here instead of in place of this particular equation we have introduced one thing which is that rn rn actually stands for the windowing function so uh, generally we can say in periodic shift the resulting sequence is periodic and we introduce the mathematical function modulo whereas in circular shift the resulting sequence is non periodic and we introduce a mathematical function called windowing function right then just study the expressions also and compare it next we are going to learn about convolutions there are mainly three types of convolutions linear circular and periodic for discrete signals we have different type of convolution one is linear convolution 
see how it is written linear configuration is defined as just study this equation x of n into y of n equal to summation over k minus infinity plus infinity x of k y of n minus k and for a sequence of length n it becomes just note the difference in the limit k tending from 0 to n minus 1 n is actually the length of the sequence the rest is the same the resulting sequence is of length to n minus 1 and this type of convolution is a means to implement filtering so that's all about linear convolution next comes periodic convolution here the only difference you can see is that periodic if that uh, convolution is of infinite length and if it is repeating so the sequence is getting repeated then what you do you just introduce to the mathematical function or uh, the modulo function here the rest is the same just compare with this equation this is uh, compare this equation in here we introduce only this uh, equation is same as the coming one see just we are introducing the modulo function here the rest is the same then the last sequence the last convolution is about circular convolution in circular convolution i have already said we are to introduce which function a mathematical function called windowing function which here this is a windowing function this is a modulo function so if this is a sequence and it is repeated at uh, infinite number of times so you introduce a modulo function at the same time you are talking about circular convolution so you also use the uh, windowing function rm so all the situations are same so just uh, there will be slight differences so understand the difference and introduce the functions as such okay so today uh, that's it that's enough so we have studied about these are the various techniques that you can apply on to a discrete time signal we have talked about the shift that is periodic shift circular shift linear shift etc and in convolution we have studied about linear circular and periodic convolutions then we uh, talked about two functions modulo function and windowing function and so on so uh, that's all for now and uh, notes i will upload along with this video okay okay then